Hello everyone, my name is Sheep and the Cat, also known as Hamish Mercuria, and today I'm talking about rovers. Now, at some stages in the game, all of us are going to end up using rovers. Basically, we stick wheels onto anything, whether it's pretty much a whole rocket or just a probe, and immediately we can term it a rover. Now, when dealing with a rover, there's three key attributes. How hard it is to get where it's going, how able it is when it gets there to cross terrain, and how well it handles its speed. These three things will pretty much determine the purpose of nearly any rover you'll build. Other specific factors to some rovers would include payload capacity, if it's going to function as a truck or a fueler, or perhaps if it might be a rocket launch vehicle that you drive for somewhere to launch. The possibilities are pretty much endless, but all rovers will share those th key three attributes. When it comes to the first attribute, mass, pretty much anyone who's played KSP much is going to be able to figure it out. You build that of light materials and try and keep the general parts kept down. However, this category of transporting is about more than just mass. Um, one of the key rover specific things is that typically they need to be deployed from some other vehicle, unless you're actually just going to moat around the Kerbal Space Center for the rover's entire life. So this means that you need a key area that you can connect to the vehicle. Somewhere near its centre of mass and on the top of the vehicle are normal preferences. So on this vehicle you can actually attach a sky crane, such as this one above, to straight to the top of the vehicle on the attachments points on the plate. This is one of the key advantages to using a plate built rover design such as this one is that the plate has a connection point exactly in its center. It's pretty thin, it's pretty strong, and they're actually pretty heavy, which can be an advantage if you place them low to the ground. But we'll get into that more at the handling and speed section. Now, just placing that back up there so we can get a better look at the thing. The next piece is its cross-terrain ability. This will be determined by its tire size, because that determines the biggest step that it can climb up, just over half the tire normally, as well as the um, ramp over angle, or angle between the two tires, approach angle, or angle on the front from the front tire to the furthest most um, suspension component, which on this design of Rover is basically infinite because vertical wall you still don't touch it. Departure angle, which is just the same thing on the back. Um, and you've also got your ground clearance, which is the height for hitting objects when the wheels remain flat. So in fact, if you've got a rock or something, or a bump on the ground, you need enough ground clearance that even though your tyres aren't going to pass over it, it's not going to connect with the undercarriage of the vehicle. Now, all of these things are reasonably easy to achieve on their own. I mean, we simply just make the vehicle taller, we make it short, you know, it'll work well for cross-terrain ability. Unfortunately, for cross-terrain ability, the um, rollover angles are also highly significant. So we're going to need to be able to place this rover on a large slope. So if we look at the center of mass, and we draw an imaginary line in the heads from the middle of the center of that mass to the edge of the outside wheel, this will effectively give us the angle the rover can sit on without rolling over. More than that, and the rover's it's in for trouble normally. The reason for this is that Quite simply, gravity is pulling a line straight down from the centre of mass, and if it's ever pulling outside of the wheel or track width, or the wheelbase this way, then it's going to pivot around this point and fall, fall over. Which typically isn't what you want. There are some special circumstances where this is okay, like rovers which 
are reversible, so you flip them over and they just keep driving, but upside down. Um, most of the time it's a problem, though. Which sort of brings us on to how well they handle its speed. Because this fact is significant, as is the track width, compared to the wheelbase. Quite simply, the wider the rover is, the longer you're going to need to make the wheelbase to have it handle successfully at speed. This is because, if we imagine the rover was perfectly square, and this one's not quite, but it's relatively close, then there's just as much dynamic friction pushing the vehicle sideways and pushing the vehicle forwards. So the second you break traction, for whatever reason, the vehicle is effectively, it's got nothing holding in the same direction. On the other hand, in a vehicle that's even slightly longer, but in fact it grows as the difference does, than it is wide, there's going to be more dynamic friction attempting to rotate the vehicle as you slide it across the road than as you just leave it rolling forwards. So the vehicle will tend to pull straight and stay relatively straight. However, it does have a disadvantage. The longer your wheelbase, the um, larger your turning circle, which is if you hold maximum steer and tap the throttle lightly so you're moving nice and slow, the circle that you can actually turn the vehicle through 360 degrees in. Um, now this is not normally a huge deal on KSP because very few circumstances are we dealing with cramped areas. You know, we're going to other worlds with no civilization. There's typically plenty of open space to drive in. But it does restrict how nimble it is for parking it and docking it to other vehicles and that sort of utility. But it can also be a good thing, because remember we're talking about handling at speed. In a car, if I'm driving reasonably quickly, I'm not going to steer very sharp, or I'm going to, of course, roll over, because as the vehicle's attempting to turn, we're decelerating from the path that we were already taking. This is effectively, it's causing, oh, it's a force of acceleration still, even though we are decelerating. And like I said before, this can place either place the um, felt gravity outside of our wheelbase, causing us to roll over, or it can cause us to break traction, which will cause the vehicle to slide sideways. In KSP, typically you roll the, most vehicles over before you break traction, unless it's a reasonably specialised design. Now, the, what the larger turning circle means is we're not turning as tight, so effectively it's like using less of the steering lock on your car. So when you're going down the highway, you're not making very big movements. Having a long, long wheelbase or disabling the turning on the rear tyres in-game will make the vehicle turn less when you're holding one of the turn keys, which is effectively going to give us a similar result. So that helps handling at speed. The final point of handling at speed is going to be the rotational mass. Now a vehicle with all of its mass in the center can rotate around that point reasonably freely. A vehicle with all of its weight at either end is going to rotate around the center point, which is still the center of mass in the middle, with a lot a lot more sluggishly. It's going to take more effort to accelerate that mass. Which as we're travelling over bumps and things, which is again quite common, the moon's not exactly smooth highway, and on lower gravity it's more significant because we're going to get pretty much airborne off even reasonably small bumps for a small period, this vehicle is going to remain flatter because it won't change off course as much. Um, also worth noting is power drain. Because quite simply, when we run out of power, we're not going anywhere. <laughs> and if it's a probe-controlled rover, we not, might not even be able to get back in control to set up to get power again. Which, that's pretty much the end of your mission, if that happens to a probe. But even if it's a manned rover, it can mean a hell of a weight, which isn't really all that fun. And this rover is the most obvious design. 
pretty much I've matched the power draw from the wheels to the RTGs. So it always has the right amount of power. It's got two little batteries up here, but basically it doesn't need them. They sort of work as virtual headlights more than anything else in this design. You do need some power storage. Even the amount of pro bodies got is enough, but if you don't have any, the game is known to clip, glitch out kind of badly because the RTGs don't store enough. So if you've got a large power drain, you can actually find yourself running out of power even though you've got enough supply to meet the demand. Um, it's worth keeping in mind uh, the final thing for cross terrain ability and handling at speed is the durability and rigidity of the vehicle. Now, plenty of things have very high crash tolerances KSP. Pretty much anything under the structural tab will have plenty of crash tolerance for a rover. They're not going to explode if you run them into anything. However, they're not all created equal in terms of their strength connecting to other parts. For instance, I've just clipped these uh, RTGs on. I haven't used them instead of the struts in the middle. The reason for this is they're not very strong at attaching to other parts. So if I were to try and attach the axle to the body with them, even though the RTGs themselves wouldn't break, their connection to the main body could fail under duress. And then we've got two halves of rover, that's not going to do us much good. And rigidity is the final point. If we start adding too many parts, I mean this structure is fine because they're all fairly strong connection parts and there's not all that many of them. But if I was trying to make a uh, wheelbase longer than this by chaining together a whole line of these, we would begin to find that the flex between them would cause the vehicle to torque around. Pretty much what that's going to mean is it's going to hop and skip as it breaks and loses traction from flexing this way and it's going to steer as it flexes that way which is going to make the vehicle hard to control on the other hand in slow moving situations we can deliberately exploit this to try and effectively increase our suspension articulation but typically we would avoid this anyway I think that that should clarify some of the basic points on rover design I've been Cheap in the Cut. I'll see you all next time.